Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maika. Today I have a bit of a discussion video for you, which is different for me. Um, but I want to discuss the topic of YA, young adult as a genre, and especially reading YA as an adult. I saw this topic making the rounds on YouTube. I watched a video by Daniel Green and then the book Leo, and I will make sure to link their videos down below. And they also did a live together sort of discussing the problems of YA. And myself being an adult, really liking some YA, but not all of it. And as someone who mainly started reading YA when they were already past <laughs> the sort of um, age benchmark of YA fiction, um, I sort of think I have a, a different perspective on this topic than most people on YouTube would. In this video, I want to tackle four topics. First of all, I'm going to give you a bit of a background about my reading journey, um, because I think that's important to know why you're sort of to understand where I'm coming from. And then I will be discussing what, according to me, are the advantages of YA fiction, some disadvantages of YA fiction, and then I want to share my top five favorites if you're an adult reading YA, what I think are good ones that you can get started with that covers all of the things that I do enjoy in YA. So the first topic I would like to cover is sort of like my reading backstory, so you kind of understand where I'm coming from. So the first thing you should know is that English is not my first language. I definitely learned English in school growing up. I'm currently an English teacher and sort of reading is of course like a part of that course and parting part of everything that I do um, but it wasn't always like that for me and um, so I, I've, I've mentioned this story a few times but when I was a kid I used to read tons I was that kid who would go to the library get like the maximum amount of books you were allowed to take with you and then a week later I would be back and you know and get more and that enjoyment of reading was completely killed by my, my high school teachers, uh, especially my Dutch teacher. He made me read sort of what would have been YA at the time. I'm talking about the mid nineties here. Um, and at the time, YA as a genre wasn't really a thing. So my library, I remember they had A, B and C books, and then you would get adult fiction. And I was reading mainly B books, which I think would roughly be middle grade. And, but he was like, no, you're at this higher level in high school now, you need to read C books. And I remember that I would go to the library to try and find a book for book reports and I just, I was always stuck because the things I liked about reading, which was like these different worlds and more like fantasy, like I was already into urban fantasy when I was a kid. So like vampires, witches, zombies, if it had that, I was happy but I couldn't find it in this C book kind of section of my library. I grew up in a not so large town in the Netherlands, so it could be that it was limiting because of that. It could also very well be that most of that section uh, entailed like Dutch authors and like Dutch youth literature, and a lot of it was from like the 80s and like maybe even the 70s, so it wasn't very up to date, I felt like most of the books that really excited me were in this other section. And suddenly I had someone who was telling me, no, 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 that's not good enough, you can only read this. So that was very frustrating for me and it really took away the enjoyment of reading for me. Until I started reading English. And the first books I really read in English, like seriously, was Harry Potter. So I was like, 15, 16, maybe 17 when I started reading these. I knew I wanted to study English. I knew I had to work on my English. So I read Harry Potter. Um, not all of the books were out at the time when I did that. So that was sort of like my first like taste of this thing. But then I went to college and I had to read so much for classes that reading for enjoyment didn't really happen. So it wasn't later until I graduated. And I, rem I still remember very vividly how this sort of happened. Um, this was at the height of the Twilight hype, and a friend of mine was like, you like vampires, I know you like to read, um, maybe you should give this a go. So I read Twilight, and that's when I fell in love <laughs> with reading again. So that, that enjoyment, that spark that it had for me as a kid, that's what I found again through reading YA, and that's when I started getting more into reading again until the point where I'm at right now, where I try to read as much as I can. So for me, YA has been very essential 
for my reading process. Uh, but from what I have read, I have sort of come to understand what I like and what I don't like about YA. So I first want to focus on the things I like, and then some of these things also go hand in hand with some of the things I don't like. So YA, for me, as I already said, it really brought that spark, that joy back for me for reading. And one of the reasons, I've been trying to pinpoint what it was for me, and it's, it's actually a number of factors. And first of all, it's just, especially if you're trying to read for enjoyment at the end of a long day at work, then I don't always want super complex, philosophical stories with underlying meanings and all that. Sometimes I just want something easy. And that's what YA is for me. It's easy to read. The font is usually quite big. The chapters are short. Um, there's usually a lot of line spacing just in the, the way the book is laid out. So even if a book seems to be like 500 pages, you can easily read it in a day because you can just like keep going. And that sort of level of easiness, as I already mentioned, I sometimes want my stories that I read to not have these like complicated, deeper meanings, like, ooh, this could also mean this. You know, in adult fiction, especially like literary fiction, like everything's a metaphor. Sometimes I want the story to just be the story. And I think that YA is really good at just giving you the story. And that brings me to another thing that I really, really also appreciate about YA. And that's just that it's very heartwarming. I feel that what YA usually brings me is this warm hug. <laughs> and sometimes I just need that. Sometimes I don't want my life to be super complicated and I can escape to this lovely world and YA to me very often delivers me that. For me, it's just really sort of this like escape from reality. And that's why I very often read books to escape from reality. Again, I don't always want that deeper philosophical meaning. If I want that, I'll seek it out. But sometimes I just want something that's uncomplicated about some lovely characters and just have a good time. And I think that YA is also good at some other things. So I already mentioned that the story doesn't always have to be super complicated. And I feel that YA can be really good at focusing more on the action or the characters of the story. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, adult fiction definitely also has character-driven stories, but I think that in YA, that sort of combination can work very well. So it's not always, you know, again, steeped in like all of these underlying meanings or like, ooh, this is very complex and that little nugget that happened in chapter three is now important for chapter 30, that happens a lot less. So you just need to pay less attention. You, very often the plots are very quick and sort of like action packed that keep you reading and wanting more. Um, you know, for me, YA is very often just one big giant page turner. And another thing that I really like is that YA does a much better job at presenting diverse casts of characters. But I feel that, especially because YA has many more female protect protagonists in like a fantasy setting, that for me was very engaging to sort of get into YA stories. There's, I feel there's just a better representation of different types of characters. But that also brings me to the next section of this video, which is the things I don't like about YA. So some of the disadvantages for me for YA that sometimes I want from the story but that I don't get. And let's just link it to diversity first because how much I appreciate there being super diverse casts of characters, I also sometimes think that YA is overdoing it a bit. But I'm sort of feeling that in some YA stories the effect that like diversity is used for effect. And I think that then you're not really, like then you're putting diverse characters in because you want to tick the box. Yes, diverse casts of characters, super duper important, different perspectives, really important to tell those stories. But if you're just using minorities for effect, I feel you're missing the point. And I feel that YA, 
sometimes verges onto this gimmickiness of using diverse characters to show how strong they are, that against all expectations, the girl in the wheelchair still does, you know, and I'm like, no, don't put the emphasis on the fact that she's in the wheelchair, you know? So for me, the perspective would have to change and just be more about the person and the intrinsic motivations that they have, rather than the fact like, look at her being kick-ass because she's in a wheelchair. Nobody's kick-ass because they're in a wheelchair. They're kick-ass because they're kick-ass. So that would be disadvantage number one. Another disadvantage that I find with YA is also the complexity. So yes, sometimes I want that easy, breezy, action-packed, warm hug that sparks joy. But sometimes I just think that YA can do with a little bit more oomph. So very often I feel that many YA books just kind of stay at the surface. And for me, that's not always what I want. So I really need to be in the mood for YA. But sometimes I feel like, oh, this story would have been so much better if, you know, just that, that little extra step. And this, this also, for instance, brings me, like this ties in with the complexity and the diversity comment I just made. But my third sort of comment, what, what I sometimes don't like very much about YA, is the fact that I sometimes feel that YA, despite a very diverse cast of characters and all that, it still feels like it presents one type of teenage experience. Because YA can overemphasize certain aspects in characters, especially if they are minorities or if they are going through something, I just feel it kind of becomes a bit slapsticky almost. And because they tend to focus on like one very particular type of teenage experience, which is very often a Western, middle class sort of perspective, I think that YA can do better and appeal to more people even if they were to be truly, truly diverse. So, um, you know, try to, you know, create more perspective from like different socioeconomic backgrounds. I'm not really getting that a lot in YA. A lot of what I've read, and again, I have to say, it's limiting. I'm not saying that I'm the expert on YA, but from what I've read, it's all sort of around the same sort of benchmark. So it's like they have this perfect teenager in their heads and that's who they write for. And I think that because you're doing that, you're not actually writing for a very large audience. And I mean, there are definitely adult books who you could blame for doing exactly the same thing. I'm not saying this is just a YA thing. The last point I wanted to make when it comes to YA and sort of like something I don't always like, is the fact that it's quite black and white. So this again has to do with the level of complexity that we're dealing with here. Because the story is less complex, I also feel that characters and character development is sometimes not fleshed out well enough. So for instance, what I would like to see more of in YA is morally gray characters. People whose actions aren't always fully explained. I feel that in YA, there is such a focus on trying to wrap up everything so nicely at the end of the book or series or whatever it is you're reading that it sort of tries to then push ideas to you that it shouldn't. So sometimes it goes too quickly, like snap, snap, all of a sudden people have taken a decision and that's it and you never really get the underlying motives for it as well. So I would like to yeah, just have some more depth in the character sometimes. And I thought we were almost done, but we're not. <laughs> I have one more disadvantage for you, and that is romance in YA. I don't like romance at all. So then why do I like reading YA, huh? Um, so because a lot of YA has a lot of like love stories, romances, love triangles, insta-love, you name it, it's going on in YA. And, and as much as I like, heartwarming stories, even like about people falling in love. I can, I can appreciate that if it's done right. And romance in YA, 
No. That brings me to my top five favorite books, actually. So I just wanted to recommend my top five favorite YA reads. They are all series. Let's just start with the most popular one I feel that is in this bunch, and that would be Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. I also read the original Grisha trilogy, but I just like this a lot more. Not because I didn't like the whole like Grisha like magical system, that I like, but the romance in that book. It was just, it was painful. And what I just like about Six of Crows so much is that it kind of does everything that I like in YA. It's quick, it's easy, you get friendship between these like six characters that are doing this heist. There are stakes, it's action-packed, it's not too deep to understand it, and what I really thought was a nice touch in this, me being Dutch, is that this world that it's set in is roughly based on 17th century Amsterdam. I feel that that is a part that hardly anybody with an English language background recognizes. <laughs> um, so that I did want to point out that Six of Crows has my heart a little bit and it just has that extra sort of tick. I just really like how these characters play off to each other. I also really like that at the end of this first book the stakes are set for the second one. So for me this was something that I read in a day, boom boom boom, there, just thoroughly enjoyed myself reading this. And yeah, this is just, this was one of my favorites. Let's talk about some books that I would recommend and why I would recommend them, but that I know a lot of people are going to say, how can you recommend that? And let's just talk about the elephant in the room here, which would be Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. So Throne of Glass series is one that a lot of people have critiqued. A lot of people have DNF'd it along the way. For me, this is one of the full like epic YA fantasy books that I read. So maybe it was because I was a noob, who knows, but I ended up really liking this series as a whole. In this series we meet Selena, who in the first book is released from uh, a salt mine, I believe, where she is doing heart labor as a punishment for being an assassin. I have to say that in the individual books there are definitely, definitely issues. <laughs> there are a lot of issues with some of the stories in here. Selena, in the first book, we get to hear that she's an assassin and she's supposed to be this kick-ass assassin, but we never really get to see her doing all these kick-ass things. To me, that is something I see happening quite often in YA, where the action itself isn't given but alluded to, and I feel that this book, especially the first one, does that a lot, where it's like, ooh, look at her being kick-ass, and you don't actually know why she's being kick-ass. Um, I definitely think the book makes good on that in books two and three. It definitely gets a bit better, we get to see more of her abilities. I also feel though that this story in the end didn't really, it seemed like it sometimes didn't always know where it wanted to go. However, the reason why I love the Throne of Glass series is because there's such a wide cast of characters with many different subplots and I ended up liking a lot of the subplots a lot more than the actual story that was going on. For me, Manon, the witches, that entire storyline, I lived for it. I lived for it. But another thing that I really appreciated about Throne of Glass after having read all of them, I just felt that the series wrapped up in a good way, but still not like putting a nice bow around it and everything is all good. I definitely felt that when the story was over, not everything had been necessarily resolved and that Sarah J Maas also along the way wasn't afraid of killing off certain characters. So that's why I ended up liking Throne of Glass quite a bit. Was it perfect? By no means, but for YA epic fantasy, fan, fantasy series, I just, I really enjoyed it. Another book that I think a lot of people are going to say, why do you even like that? And that would be Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. This is a fourth, four part series and we focus, what's her name again? Mare, I think she's called. And Mare finds out that she, despite she's, she's a lowly red, has special powers. So in this world we have Silvers who have special powers and who are in like the governing layers and then you have the poor people who have red blood and they are not supposed to have any powers and there is this really long-standing war going on and all the reds are just you know sent there for slaughter and something needs to happen. 
it's a bit sort of like, well, it's fantasy, but it's it kind of feels Hunger Gamesy, kind of dystopian at the same time. And I do have to say that I think a lot of people didn't like this because they felt it really used a lot of the tropes that a lot of people had already seen in this like more fantasy, dystopian focused kind of books. And after having read all four books, what I liked, yes, we get a bit of romance in here, but it's complex. It's not like, ooh, I love you. And then, you know, that's it. There is a little bit of complexity in here. There is a bad guy that you want to love or hate. And he is actually like, there are some morally great characters in this story which I really like, like Mare herself is not perfect and that's totally fine. So that's what I really, un in the end, really start, like just loved about this book. And I really felt that the series again wrapped up in a good way where, you know, the story was wrapped up, but again, not necessarily with a bow around it. There are a couple of open ends. This is a series that could be continued. <laughs> Next up is a series that I re finished reading just this year, and that would be the Jacobi series by William Ritter. And this is a book that nobody talks about. <laughs> no, I haven't heard anybody on Booktube, Booktube talking about the Jacobi series by William Ritter. It's a four-part series. If you don't know what it's about, we meet Abigail Rook the moment she sets foot in New Fiddleham. Yes, New Fiddleham in New England at the end of the 19th century. She gets off a boat from Europe, and she's just trying to flee from her parents, pretty much. She, that's when she meets, uh, right fresh off the boat, she meets Mr. Jacoby. And Mr. Jacoby is a detective of all things paranormal and weird. It's historical fiction, it has detective, but it also has magic. And each story sort of progresses the overarching storyline, even though each book still has its own overarching plot. It's not romance heavy. It's not. It's very much sort of like friendship, banter, all of that. It's just about professional and mutual respect. At the same time, we get to explore some magical worlds. There's a book with a dragon in it. It's lovely. <laughs> and in the end, in book four, all of these storylines start to come together. And I felt that in a way in this book, it was all wrapped up a bit too nicely in the end. Um, and it was a bit predictable in the final book, but overall, all of these stories, the characters in them, I really like them. Again, easy, breezy, action-packed book, but focused on friendship more so than romance. And then, last but not least, I think my most solid recommendation here would be the Lockwood & Co. Quintet, because it's five books by Jonathan Stroud. This is a book that I very randomly found in my local bookstore. And the first one is called The Screaming Staircase. Again, nobody talks about these books. No, more people should be reading these. This is a YA series set in an alternate version of London where ghosts are a problem. So it's a bit urban fantasy, is it? Yeah, I would call it urban fantasy. In this alternate universe, ghosts have become a problem. They, there are cold spots everywhere, and if you touch a ghost, you die from ghost touch. So these ghosts are definitely a major, major problem. And the only people who can see the ghosts are people who are not yet adults, so children and teenagers. So what happens is to take care of the problem, all of these agencies start popping up to combat the ghosts, filled, of course, with kids and teenagers. Lockwood & Co. is the first ghost hunting agency run by teenagers and not adults, uh, who can no longer see the ghosts. Um, they fight the ghosts with rapiers and there's lots of action. And we focus on Lucy, who just moved to London from up north, and she needs a place to stay and to work, so she signs up to Lookwood & Co. Anthony Lookwood is the person who runs the place. They take residence in his house uh, that he inherited from his parents. And then there's George, and these three characters have their roles within the team. So Anthony is sort of like the head of the team. George is the nerdy investigator guy who goes to the library to figure out how everything works. And Lucy is this sassy girl who finds out she can talk to ghosts. It's just a really, really action-packed, lovely story. Great characters, and we definitely get to know these characters better with every book that we see. I just really liked it. These would be my recommendations. 
This is why I like to read YA and what I don't always like about YA. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make one video a week on this channel and they, they always go live on Fridays at 6 p.m. Central European time. So I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!